It was never going to be just about squirrels. So what I have here is, um, as you can see, it's, it's uh, basically vermin I've shot over the last few days. Um, really the smelly the better, so the foxes can smell it. Magpies this time of year is obviously very important with the younger birds all nesting and they really are very destructive. Um, so yeah, once you've got your vermin, just put a couple of carcasses on the end of a string and then run the string up to part of the house, which basically you're in. So for example, it's my bedroom. Um, at the end of the string, I've got a bell. At the end of that, obviously, when something grabs hold of this, that bell then goes off. The alarm anyone is in there at the moment, so <laughs> possibly Laura. Anyway, so that bell then goes off and hopefully wakes you up or alerts you, whatever you're doing. Um, and you know there's probably a fox at the end of the, uh, either the house cat, which um, is always a bit annoying, but normally a fox at the end of the line. And uh, if you've got a gun to hand, you know exactly where to look with a lamp. So um, it's an easy, good and easy way to control predators around the home. So last night at about 4 a.m. I was woken to a very loud crash. Uh, and it did, the bell sort of woke me up and as I went to, to sort of look, to look out the window with the lamp, um, it then the fox then pulled hard again and it broke the bell off the, rack, the bracket and smashed the window. <laughs> so I think the Charlie had the last laugh in that situation, but um, yeah, it was, I think there's a bit of design fault which has been amended. Um, and it's now back in action, so all good. We are out squirrelling. Ollie's family land holding supports the reintroduction of Cornish red squirrels, and that means straight up get rid of the greys. There are a few questions we answer over and over again in comments, and so for the record, grey squirrels are non native invaders that eat songbird eggs and chicks that kill trees and that carry a disease that kills the UK's native red squirrels. And no, we generally don't eat them in the UK, though Southern Fried Squirrel was Elvis Presley's favourite dish. All hail the king. The first one Ollie comes across is at the edge of the shotgun's range and beyond the camera. A bit ambitious, but have a pot, why not? Needs to be, needs to be shot, so wasn't going to let us any closer, certainly. The problem is today we've got uh, a very, an alien invasion, which is obviously the grey squirrel across the whole country, um, and we down here, there's a red, the Red Squirrel Trust down here is, is a very fervent drive towards eradicating the greys, or as diminishing their numbers as, as much as possible, if not eradicating them, um, through a reintroduction programme for the, for the Reds. Uh, so far, the pairs that have been released uh, at Trewithin in places like that haven't done very well because there's just too many greys around. I mean, you'll see today, we'll be walking through the, the, the woods and, well, cameras out so we'll probably see none <laughs> but we'd hope to see a few and hopefully shoot a few and we can't shoot enough really because they're just causing causing chaos with with with, with um well there's no reds around here at all anymore as a result so a walk around like this gives ollie a chance to be a can of heineken and reach the parts of the farm that other estate workers don't reach here's a pond he's been working on it was very very enclosed very overgrown about a year ago um, and i've spent a lot of time down here with the chainsaw as you can see um, just clearing it out, trying to get a bit of light into the area, trying to get these pond weeds growing up and um, just creating a bit of a habitat for, for waterfowl. Really as a flighting pond was, was sort of the first uh, port of call, but I realised last summer that it was having a really great effect on the wildlife as a whole. This wood is very good for, for deer, um, very good for you know ground nesting birds. So it's just a very, because it's very private, very sort of off the beaten track. A big part of shooting for me is, is just, it's just a, it's a walk around. It's, it's seeing your hard work of, of basically trying to help mother nature out, pay off. You know, you see the, you see the wild birds coming out, um, you shoot one or two, but most importantly, you have a good day out. And I think that's what we're trying to achieve with, with the wild birds these, this year, is just trying to create the habitat, you know, really keep the predators down. Um, you know, foxes, obviously, magpies, um, uh, jays, you know, the corvids, really trying to control them to an extent where they're not raiding the nest. You know, I saw a, what's it called, an Instagram post by um, Paul Childley today, actually. He was just he just put up a post with a bunch of feathers and then a clutch of eggs and obviously a fox had come in there and just 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 grabbed the hen because she won't obviously she won't leave the nest um until it's too late so if you can try and get rid of the predators and create these habitats then you know you're giving it you're giving them the fighting chance of producing at least some of some some young so back to the squirrels and ollie heads up to woodland where there is a row of pheasant feeders or as the squirrels call them squirrel feeders <laughs> Basically what we've got here, as you can see, also the pheasant feeders and the squirrels, they, 
they also cause a lot of damage to this. So all this damage here, you can see this handle's basically about to come off. Um, this has all been gnawed down. They actually eventually gnaw through this uh, and create holes in it. Which, and these lids, and very annoyingly, are very hard to come by. So um, it's either a box job to sort of get it all back together, but most of the time it's replacing the entire feeder um, from a little hole. Another corner, another feeder, another squirrel. I mean, I was trying to be cool, but it didn't work. <laughs> After the excitement, we hear the peeping of a roe kid that's lost its mother. It's calling plaintively from beside the pheasant pen. There's nothing you can or should do to help nature here, but for our own peace of mind, we hide under a tree to see what happens. Sure enough, she comes and claims the kid as soon as she thinks we're out of the way. Probably could have had one or two more, but... Uh... Um, yeah, to happy with three. It's, um, it's just thinning them out. Like I said, it's, it sort of fills into what I was saying earlier. It's a difficult thing to really eradicate the squirrels because they're they're quite quick and they're very. Um, when you've got the really thick woodlands like this, it's, it's really hard to get in on them. But uh, yeah, three nice off, nice sort of evenings work. I have eaten squirrel before, but I, I wouldn't really recommend it. You know, it's quite stringy. There are two red squirrel projects underway in Cornwall. The Red Squirrel Survival Trust, patron His Royal Highness the Duke of Cornwall, is a captive breeding project with a centre at nearby Trewithin. The Cornwall Red Squirrel Project is all about removing greys from the Lizard Peninsula and then moving the project east, ultimately as far as Kent. Both are keen to see greys shot. Links are in the description below.